Concrete, usually Portland cement concrete for its visual resemblance to Portland stone, is a composite material composed of fine and coarse aggregate bonded together with a fluid cement, cement paste that hardens over time. Most frequently in the past a lime-based cement binder, such as lime putty, but sometimes with other hydraulic cements, such as a calcium aluminate cement or Portland cement. It is distinguished from other, non-cementitious types of concrete all binding some form of aggregate together, including asphalt concrete with a bitumen binder, which is frequently used for road surfaces, and polymer concretes that use polymers as a binder. When aggregate is mixed with dry Portland cement and water, the mixture forms a fluid slurry that is easily poured and molded into shape. The cement reacts with the water and other ingredients to form a hard matrix that binds the materials together into a durable stone-like material that has many uses. Often, additives such as pozzolans or superplasticizers are included in the mixture to improve the physical properties of the wet mix or the finished material. Most concrete is poured with reinforcing materials such as rebar embedded to provide tensile strength, yielding reinforced concrete. Concrete is one of the most frequently used building materials. Its usage worldwide, ton for ton, is twice that of steel, wood, plastics, and aluminum combined. Globally, the ready-mix concrete industry, the largest segment of the concrete market, is projected to exceed $600 billion in revenue by 2025. Topic. Etymology. The word concrete comes from the Latin word concretus, meaning compact or condensed, the perfect passive participle of concrescere, from con, together, and crescere, to grow. Topic. History Topic. Ancient times Small-scale production of concrete-like materials was pioneered by the Nabataean traders who occupied and controlled a series of oases and developed a small empire in the regions of southern Syria and northern Jordan from the 4th century BC. They discovered the advantages of hydraulic lime, with some self-cementing properties, by 700 BC. They built kilns to supply mortar for the construction of rubble wall houses, concrete floors, and underground waterproof cisterns. They kept the cisterns secret as these enabled the Nabataeans to thrive in the desert. Some of these structures survive to this day. Topic. Classical era In the ancient Egyptian and later Roman eras, builders discovered that adding volcanic ash to the mix allowed it to set underwater. Concrete floors were found in the royal palace of Tyrans, Greece, which dates roughly to 1400 to 1200 BC. Lime mortars were used in Greece, Crete, and Cyprus in 800 BC. The Assyrian Jerwan Aqueduct 688 BC made use of waterproof concrete. Concrete was used for construction in many ancient structures. The Romans used concrete extensively from 300 BC to 476 AD, a span of more than 700 years. During the Roman Empire, Roman concrete or opus caementicium was made from quicklime, pozzolana, and an aggregate of pumice. Its widespread use in many Roman structures, a key event in the history of architecture termed the Roman Architectural Revolution, freed Roman construction from the restrictions of stone and brick materials. It enabled revolutionary new designs in terms of both structural complexity and dimension. Concrete, as the Romans knew it, was a new and revolutionary material. Laid in the shape of arches, vaults and domes, it quickly hardened into a rigid mass, free from many of the internal thrusts and strains that troubled the builders of similar structures in stone or brick. Modern tests show that Opus caementicium had as much compressive strength as modern Portland cement concrete ca. 200 kg per square centimeter 20 megapascals, 2,800 psi. 
However, due to the absence of reinforcement, its tensile strength was far lower than modern reinforced concrete, and its mode of application was also different. Modern structural concrete differs from Roman concrete in two important details. First, its mix consistency is fluid and homogeneous, allowing it to be poured into forms rather than requiring hand layering together with the placement of aggregate, which, in Roman practice, often consisted of rubble. Second, integral reinforcing steel gives modern concrete assemblies great strength in tension, whereas Roman concrete could depend only upon the strength of the concrete bonding to resist tension. The long-term durability of Roman concrete structures has been found to be due to its use of pyroclastic volcanic rock and ash, whereby crystallization of stratlingite and the coalescence of calcium-aluminum silicate hydrate cementing binder helped give the concrete a greater degree of fracture resistance even in seismically active environments. Roman concrete is significantly more resistant to erosion by seawater than modern concrete. It used pyroclastic materials which react with seawater to form al tobermorite crystals over time. The widespread use of concrete in many Roman structures ensured that many survive to the present day. The Baths of Caracalla in Rome are just one example. Many Roman aqueducts and bridges, such as the magnificent Pont du Gard in southern France, have masonry cladding on a concrete core, as does the Dome of the Pantheon. After the Roman Empire collapsed, use of concrete became rare until the technology was redeveloped in the mid-18th century. Worldwide, concrete has overtaken steel in tonnage of material used. Topic. Middle Ages After the Roman Empire, the use of burned lime and pozzolana was greatly reduced until the technique was all but forgotten between 500 and the 14th century. From the 14th century to the mid-18th century, the use of cement gradually returned. The Canal du Midi was built using concrete in 1670. Topic. Industrial era Perhaps the greatest step forward in the modern use of concrete was Smeaton's Tower, built by British engineer John Smeaton in Devon, England, between 1756 and 1759. This third Eddystone lighthouse pioneered the use of hydraulic lime in concrete, using pebbles and powdered brick as aggregate. A method for producing Portland cement was developed in England and patented by Joseph Aspden in 1824. Aspden chose the name for its similarity to Portland stone, which was quarried on the Isle of Portland in Dorset, England. His son William continued developments into the 1840s, earning him recognition for the development of modern. Portland cement, reinforced concrete was invented in 1849 by Joseph Monier, and the first house was built by François Cognier in 1853. The first concrete reinforced bridge was designed and built by Joseph Monier in 1875. Famous concrete structures include the Hoover Dam, the Panama Canal and the Roman Pantheon. The earliest large-scale users of concrete technology were the ancient Romans, and concrete was widely used in the Roman Empire. The Colosseum in Rome was built largely of concrete, and the concrete dome of the Pantheon is the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. Today, large concrete structures, for example, dams and multi-story car parks, are usually made with reinforced concrete. Topic. Composition Concrete is a composite material, comprising a matrix of aggregate typically a rocky material and a binder typically Portland cement or asphalt, which holds the matrix together. Many types of concrete are available, determined by the formulations of binders and the types of aggregate used to suit the application for the material. These variables determine strength, density, as well as chemical and thermal resistance of the finished product. Aggregate consists of large chunks of material in a concrete mix, generally a coarse gravel or crushed rocks such as limestone, or granite, along with finer materials such as sand. A cement, most commonly Portland cement, is the most prevalent kind of concrete binder. 
For cementitious binders, water is mixed with the dry powder and aggregate, which produces a semi-liquid slurry that can be shaped, typically by pouring it into a form. The concrete solidifies and hardens through a chemical process called hydration. The water reacts with the cement, which bonds the other components together, creating a robust stone-like material. Other cementitious materials, such as fly ash and slag cement, are sometimes added, either pre-blended with the cement or directly as a concrete component, and become a part of the binder for the aggregate. Admixtures are added to modify the cure rate or properties of the material. Mineral admixtures use recycled materials as concrete ingredients. Conspicuous materials include fly ash, a byproduct of coal-fired power plants, ground granulated blast furnace slag, a byproduct of steelmaking, and silica fume, a byproduct of industrial electric arc furnaces. Structures employing Portland cement concrete usually include steel reinforcement. Such concrete can be formulated with high compressive strength, but always has lower tensile strength. Therefore, it is usually reinforced with materials that are strong in tension, typically steel rebar. Other materials can also be used as a concrete binder, the most prevalent alternative is asphalt, which is used as the binder in asphalt concrete. The mix design depends on the type of structure being built, how the concrete is mixed and delivered, and how it is placed to form the structure. Topic. Cement Portland cement is the most common type of cement in general usage. It is a basic ingredient of concrete, mortar and many plasters. British masonry worker Joseph Aspden patented Portland cement in 1824. It was named because of the similarity of its color to Portland limestone, quarried from the English Isle of Portland and used extensively in London architecture. It consists of a mixture of calcium silicates, alite, belite, aluminates and ferrites, compounds which combine calcium, silicon, aluminum and iron in forms which will react with water. Portland cement and similar materials are made by heating limestone, a source of calcium, with clay or shale, a source of silicon, aluminum and iron, and grinding this product, called clinker, with a source of sulfate, most commonly gypsum. In modern cement kilns many advanced features are used to lower the fuel consumption per ton of clinker produced. Cement kilns are extremely large, complex, and inherently dusty industrial installations, and have emissions which must be controlled. Of the various ingredients used to produce a given quantity of concrete, the cement is the most energetically expensive. Even complex and efficient kilns require 3.3 to 3.6 gigajoules of energy to produce a ton of clinker and then grind it into cement. Many kilns can be fueled with difficult to dispose of wastes, the most common being used tires. The extremely high temperatures and long periods of time at those temperatures allows cement kilns to efficiently and completely burn even difficult to use fuels. Topic. Water Combining water with a cementitious material forms a cement paste by the process of hydration. The cement paste glues the aggregate together, fills voids within it, and makes it flow more freely. As stated by Abrams' law, a lower water to cement ratio yields a stronger, more durable concrete, whereas more water gives a freer flowing concrete with a higher slump. Impure water used to make concrete can cause problems when setting or in causing premature failure of the structure. Hydration involves many different reactions, often occurring at the same time. As the reactions proceed, the products of the cement hydration process gradually bond together the individual sand and gravel particles and other components of the concrete to form a solid mass. Reaction Cement chemist notation, C3S plus HCSH plus CH. Standard notation, CA3 silicon oxide plus H2O sau silicon oxide H2O gel plus calcium hydroxide. 
balanced 2 Ca3 silicon oxide plus 7 H2O3 SAO2 silicon oxide 4 H2O gel plus 3 calcium hydroxide approximately the exact ratios of the SAO silicon oxide and H2O in CSH can vary topic aggregates Fine and coarse aggregates make up the bulk of a concrete mixture. Sand, natural gravel, and crushed stone are used mainly for this purpose. Recycled aggregates from construction, demolition, and excavation waste are increasingly used as partial replacements for natural aggregates, while a number of manufactured aggregates, including air-cooled blast furnace slag and bottom ash are also permitted. The size distribution of the aggregate determines how much binder is required. Aggregate with a very even size distribution has the biggest gaps whereas adding aggregate with smaller particles tends to fill these gaps. The binder must fill the gaps between the aggregate as well as paste the surfaces of the aggregate together, and is typically the most expensive component. Thus, variation in sizes of the aggregate reduces the cost of concrete. The aggregate is nearly always stronger than the binder, so its use does not negatively affect the strength of the concrete. Redistribution of aggregates after compaction often creates inhomogeneity due to the influence of vibration. This can lead to strength gradients. Decorative stones such as quartzite, small river stones or crushed glass are sometimes added to the surface of concrete for a decorative, exposed aggregate finish, popular among landscape designers. In addition to being decorative, exposed aggregate may add robustness to a concrete. Topic. Reinforcement Concrete is strong in compression, as the aggregate efficiently carries the compression load. However, it is weak in tension as the cement holding the aggregate in place can crack, allowing the structure to fail. Reinforced concrete adds either steel reinforcing bars, steel fibers, glass fibers, or plastic fibers to carry tensile loads. Topic. Admixtures Admixtures are materials in the form of powder or fluids that are added to the concrete to give it certain characteristics not obtainable with plain concrete mixes. Admixtures are defined as additions, made as the concrete mix is being prepared. The most common admixtures are retarders and accelerators. In normal use, admixture dosages are less than 5% by mass of cement and are added to the concrete at the time of batching, mixing. See section production below. The common types of admixtures are as follows. Accelerators speed up the hydration, hardening, of the concrete. Typical materials used are calcium chloride, calcium nitrate and sodium nitrate. However, use of chlorides may cause corrosion in steel reinforcing and is prohibited in some countries, so that nitrates may be favored, even though they are less effective than the chloride salt. Accelerating admixtures are especially useful for modifying the properties of concrete in cold weather. Air entraining agents add and entrain tiny air bubbles in the concrete, which reduces damage during freeze-thaw cycles, increasing durability. However, entrained air entails a trade-off with strength, as each 1% of air may decrease compressive strength by 5%. If too much air becomes trapped in the concrete as a result of the mixing process, defoamers can be used to encourage the air bubble to agglomerate, rise to the surface of the wet concrete and then disperse. Bonding agents are used to create a bond between old and new concrete, typically a type of polymer, with wide temperature tolerance and corrosion resistance. Corrosion inhibitors are used to minimize the corrosion of steel and steel bars in concrete. Crystalline admixtures are typically added during batching of the concrete to lower permeability. The reaction takes place when exposed to water and unhydrated cement particles to form insoluble needle-shaped crystals, which fill capillary pores and micro-cracks in the concrete to block pathways for water and waterborne contaminates. 
Concrete with crystalline admixture can expect to self-seal as constant exposure to water will continuously initiate crystallization to ensure permanent waterproof protection. Pigments can be used to change the color of concrete, for aesthetics. Plasticizers increase the workability of plastic, or fresh, concrete, allowing it to be placed more easily, with less consolidating effort. A typical plasticizer is lignosulfonate. Plasticizers can be used to reduce the water content of a concrete while maintaining workability and are sometimes called water reducers due to this use. Such treatment improves its strength and durability characteristics. Superplasticizers, also called high-range water reducers, are a class of plasticizers that have fewer deleterious effects and can be used to increase workability more than is practical with traditional plasticizers. Superplasticizers are used to increase compressive strength. It increases the workability of the concrete and lowers the need for water content by 15 to 30 percent. Superplasticizers lead to retarding effects. Pumping aids improve pumpability, thicken the paste and reduce separation and bleeding. Retarders slow the hydration of concrete and are used in large or difficult pours where partial setting before the pour is complete is undesirable. Typical polyol retarders are sugar, sucrose, sodium gluconate, glucose, citric acid, and tartaric acid. Topic. Mineral admixtures and blended cements Inorganic materials that have pozzolanic or latent hydraulic properties, these very fine-grained materials are added to the concrete mix to improve the properties of concrete mineral admixtures, or as a replacement for Portland cement, blended cements. Products which incorporate limestone, fly ash, blast furnace slag, and other useful materials with pozzolanic properties into the mix, are being tested and used. This development is due to cement production being one of the largest producers at about 5 to 10 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions, as well as lowering costs, improving concrete properties, and recycling wastes. Fly ash, a byproduct of coal-fired electric generating plants, it is used to partially replace Portland cement by up to 60% by mass. The properties of fly ash depend on the type of coal burnt. In general, siliceous fly ash is pozzolanic, while calcareous fly ash has latent hydraulic properties. Ground granulated blast furnace slag GGBFS or GGBS, a byproduct of steel production is used to partially replace Portland cement by up to 80% by mass. It has latent hydraulic properties. Silica fume, a byproduct of the production of silicon and ferrosilicon alloys. Silica fume is similar to fly ash, but has a particle size 100 times smaller. This results in a higher surface to volume ratio and a much faster pozzolanic reaction. Silica fume is used to increase strength and durability of concrete, but generally requires the use of superplasticizers for workability. High reactivity metacaolin Herm, metacaolin produces concrete with strength and durability similar to concrete made with silica fume. While silica fume is usually dark gray or black in color, high reactivity metacaolin is usually bright white in color, making it the preferred choice for architectural concrete where appearance is important. Carbon nanofibers can be added to concrete to enhance compressive strength and gain a higher Young's modulus, and also to improve the electrical properties required for strain monitoring, damage evaluation and self-health monitoring of concrete. Carbon fiber has many advantages in terms of mechanical and electrical properties e.g., higher strength and self-monitoring behavior due to the high tensile strength and high conductivity. Carbon products have been added to make concrete electrically conductive, for de-icing purposes. Topic. Production Concrete production is the process of mixing together the various ingredients water, aggregate, cement, and any additives to produce concrete. Concrete production is time sensitive. Once the ingredients are mixed, workers must put the concrete in place before it hardens. 
In modern usage, most concrete production takes place in a large type of industrial facility called a concrete plant, or often a batch plant. In general usage, concrete plants come in two main types, ready mix plants and central mix plants. A ready mix plant mixes all the ingredients except water, while a central mix plant mixes all the ingredients including water. A central mix plant offers more accurate control of the concrete quality through better measurements of the amount of water added, but must be placed closer to the work site where the concrete will be used, since hydration begins at the plant. A concrete plant consists of large storage hoppers for various reactive ingredients like cement, storage for bulk ingredients like aggregate and water, mechanisms for the addition of various additives and amendments, machinery to accurately weigh, move, and mix some or all of those ingredients, and facilities to dispense the mixed concrete, often to a concrete mixer truck. Modern concrete is usually prepared as a viscous fluid, so that it may be poured into forms, which are containers erected in the field to give the concrete its desired shape. Concrete formwork can be prepared in several ways, such as slip forming and steel plate construction. Alternatively, concrete can be mixed into drier, non-fluid forms and used in factory settings to manufacture precast concrete products. A wide variety of equipment is used for processing concrete, from hand tools to heavy industrial machinery. Whichever equipment builders use, however, the objective is to produce the desired building material. Ingredients must be properly mixed, placed, shaped, and retained within time constraints. Any interruption in pouring the concrete can cause the initially placed material to begin to set before the next batch is added on top. This creates a horizontal plane of weakness called a cold joint between the two batches. Once the mix is where it should be, the curing process must be controlled to ensure that the concrete attains the desired attributes. During concrete preparation, various technical details may affect the quality and nature of the product. Topic. Mixing. Thorough mixing is essential to produce uniform, high-quality concrete. Separate paste mixing has shown that the mixing of cement and water into a paste before combining these materials with aggregates can increase the compressive strength of the resulting concrete. The paste is generally mixed in a high-speed, shear-type mixer at a width cm water-to-cement ratio of 0.30 to 0.45 by mass. The cement paste premix may include admixtures such as accelerators or retarders, superplasticizers, pigments, or silica fume. The premixed paste is then blended with aggregates and any remaining batch water and final mixing is completed in conventional concrete mixing equipment. Topic. Workability Workability is the ability of a fresh, plastic, concrete mix to fill the form, mold properly with the desired work, vibration, and without reducing the concrete's quality. Workability depends on water content, aggregate, shape and size distribution, cementitious content and age, level of hydration, and can be modified by adding chemical admixtures, like superplasticizer. Raising the water content or adding chemical admixtures increases concrete workability. Excessive water leads to increased bleeding or segregation of aggregates when the cement and aggregates start to separate, with the resulting concrete having reduced quality. The use of an aggregate blend with an undesirable gradation can result in a very harsh mix design with a very low slump, which cannot readily be made more workable by addition of reasonable amounts of water. An undesirable gradation can mean using a large aggregate that is too large for the size of the formwork, or which has too few smaller aggregate grades to serve to fill the gaps between the larger grades, or using too little or too much sand for the same reason, or using too little water, or too much cement, or even using jagged crushed stone instead of smoother round aggregates such as pebbles. 
Any combination of these factors and others may result in a mix which is too harsh, i.e., which does not flow or spread out smoothly, is difficult to get into the formwork, and which is difficult to surface finish. Workability can be measured by the concrete slump test, a simple measure of the plasticity of a fresh batch of concrete following the ASTM C143 or N12350-2 test standards. Slump is normally measured by filling in Abrams cone with a sample from a fresh batch of concrete. The cone is placed with the wide end down onto a level, non-absorptive surface. It is then filled in three layers of equal volume, with each layer being tamped with a steel rod to consolidate the layer. When the cone is carefully lifted off, the enclosed material slumps a certain amount, owing to gravity. A relatively dry sample slumps very little, having a slump value of 1 or 2 inches 25 or 50 millimeters out of 1 foot 305 millimeters. A relatively wet concrete sample may slump as much as 8 inches. Workability can also be measured by the flow table test. Slump can be increased by addition of chemical admixtures such as plasticizer or superplasticizer without changing the water-cement ratio. Some other admixtures, especially air and training admixture, can increase the slump of a mix. High flow concrete, like self-consolidating concrete, is tested by other flow measuring methods. One of these methods includes placing the cone on the narrow end and observing how the mix flows through the cone while it is gradually lifted. After mixing, concrete is a fluid and can be pumped to the location where needed. Topic. Curing Concrete must be kept moist during curing in order to achieve optimal strength and durability. During curing hydration occurs, allowing calcium silicate hydrate CSH to form. Over 90% of a mix's final strength is typically reached within four weeks, with the remaining 10% achieved over years or even decades. The conversion of calcium hydroxide in the concrete into calcium carbonate from absorption of CO2 over several decades further strengthens the concrete and makes it more resistant to damage. This carbonation reaction, however, lowers the pH of the cement pore solution and can corrode the reinforcement bars. Hydration and hardening of concrete during the first three days is critical. Abnormally fast drying and shrinkage due to factors such as evaporation from wind during placement may lead to increased tensile stresses at a time when it has not yet gained sufficient strength, resulting in greater shrinkage cracking. The early strength of the concrete can be increased if it is kept damp during the curing process. Minimizing stress prior to curing minimizes cracking. High early strength concrete is designed to hydrate faster, often by increased use of cement that increases shrinkage and cracking. The strength of concrete changes increases for up to three years. It depends on cross-section dimension of elements and conditions of structure exploitation. Addition of short-cut polymer fibers can improve reduce shrinkage-induced stresses during curing and increase early and ultimate compression strength. Properly curing concrete leads to increased strength and lower permeability and avoids cracking where the surface dries out prematurely. Care must also be taken to avoid freezing or overheating due to the exothermic setting of cement. Improper curing can cause scaling, reduced strength, poor abrasion resistance and cracking. Topic. Techniques During the curing period, concrete is ideally maintained at controlled temperature and humidity. To ensure full hydration during curing, concrete slabs are often sprayed with curing compounds that create a water-retaining film over the concrete. Typical films are made of wax or related hydrophobic compounds. After the concrete is sufficiently cured, the film is allowed to abrade from the concrete through normal use. Traditional conditions for curing involve by spraying or ponding the concrete surface with water. The adjacent picture shows one of many ways to achieve this. Ponding. Submerging setting concrete in water and wrapping in plastic to prevent dehydration. Additional common curing methods include wet burlap and plastic sheeting covering the fresh concrete. 
For higher strength applications, accelerated curing techniques may be applied to the concrete. A common technique involves heating the poured concrete with steam, which serves to both keep it damp and raise the temperature, so that the hydration process proceeds more quickly and more thoroughly. Topic. Specialty types Topic. Pervious Pervious concrete is a mix of specially graded coarse aggregate, cement, water and little to no fine aggregates. This concrete is also known as no fines or porous concrete. Mixing the ingredients in a carefully controlled process creates a paste that coats and bonds the aggregate particles. The hardened concrete contains interconnected air voids totaling approximately 15 to 25 percent. Water runs through the voids in the pavement to the soil underneath. Air entrainment admixtures are often used in freeze-thaw climates to minimize the possibility of frost damage. Topic. Nanoconcrete Nanoconcrete contains Portland cement particles that are no greater than 100 micrometers. It is a product of high-energy mixing hem, of cement, sand and water. To ensure the mixing is thorough enough to create nanoconcrete, the mixer must apply a total mixing power to the mixture of 30 to 600 watts per kilogram of the mix. This mixing must continue long enough to yield a net specific energy expended upon the mix of at least 5,000 joules per kilogram of the mix, and may be increased to 30 to 80 kilojoules per kilogram. A superplasticizer is then added to the activated mixture which can later be mixed with aggregates in a conventional concrete mixer. In the HEM process, the intense mixing of cement and water with sand provides dissipation and absorption of energy by the mixture and increases shear stresses on the surface of cement particles. As a result, the temperature of the mixture increases by 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. This intense mixing serves to deepen hydration process inside the cement particles. The nano-sized colloid calcium silicate hydrate CSH formation increased several times compared with conventional mixing. Thus, the ordinary concrete transforms to nanoconcrete. The initial natural process of cement hydration with formation of colloidal globules about 5 nanometers in diameter spreads into the entire volume of cement water matrix as the energy expended upon the mix. The liquid-activated high-energy mixture can be used by itself for casting small architectural details and decorative items, or foamed, expanded, for lightweight concrete. HEM nanoconcrete hardens in low and sub-zero temperature conditions because the liquid phase inside the nanopores of CSH gel doesn't freeze at temperatures from minus 8 to minus 42 degrees Celsius. The increased volume of gel reduces capillarity in solid and porous materials. Topic. Microbial Bacteria such as Bacillus pasturi, Bacillus pseudofermis, Bacillus cani, Sporosarcina pasturi, and Arthrobacter crystallopoiates increase the compression strength of concrete through their biomass. Not all bacteria increase the strength of concrete significantly with their biomass. Bacillus sp. CT5, can reduce corrosion of reinforcement in reinforced concrete by up to four times. Sporosarcina pasturi reduces water and chloride permeability. B. Pasturi increases resistance to acid. Bacillus pasturi and B. Sphaericuscan induce calcium carbonate precipitation in the surface of cracks, adding compression strength. Topic. Polymer. Polymer concretes are mixtures of aggregate and any of various polymers and may be reinforced. The cement is costlier than lime-based cements, but polymer concretes nevertheless have advantages, they have significant tensile strength even without reinforcement, and they are largely impervious to water. Polymer concretes are frequently used for repair and construction of other applications, such as drains. Topic. 
Topic. Safety Grinding of concrete can produce hazardous dust. Exposure to cement dust can lead to issues such as silicosis, kidney disease, skin irritation and similar effects. The U.S. National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health in the United States recommends attaching local exhaust ventilation shrouds to electric concrete grinders to control the spread of this dust. In addition, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA, has placed more stringent regulations on companies whose workers regularly come into contact with silica dust. An updated silica rule, which OSHA put into effect 23 September 2017 for construction companies, restricted the amount of respirable crystalline silica workers could legally come into contact with to 50 micrograms per cubic meter of air per 8-hour workday. That same rule went into effect 23 June 2018 for general industry, hydraulic fracturing and maritime. It should be noted, however, that the deadline was extended to 23 June 2021 for engineering controls in the hydraulic fracturing industry. Companies which fail to meet the tightened safety regulations can face financial charges and extensive penalties. Topic. Properties Concrete has relatively high compressive strength, but much lower tensile strength. Therefore, it is usually reinforced with materials that are strong in tension, often steel. The elasticity of concrete is relatively constant at low stress levels but starts decreasing at higher stress levels as matrix cracking develops. Concrete has a very low coefficient of thermal expansion and shrinks as it matures. All concrete structures crack to some extent, due to shrinkage and tension. Concrete that is subjected to long-duration forces is prone to creep. Tests can be performed to ensure that the properties of concrete correspond to specifications for the application. Different mixes of concrete ingredients produce different strengths. Concrete strength values are usually specified as the lower bound compressive strength of either a cylindrical or cubic specimen as determined by standard test procedures. Different strengths of concrete are used for different purposes. Very low strength, 14 MPa, 2000 PSI or less. Concrete may be used when the concrete must be lightweight. Lightweight concrete is often achieved by adding air, foams, or lightweight aggregates, with the side effect that the strength is reduced. For most routine uses, 20 MPa PSI to 32 MPa PSI concrete is often used. 40 MPa PSI concrete is readily commercially available as a more durable, although more expensive, option. Higher strength concrete is often used for larger civil projects. Strengths above 40 MPa PSI are often used for specific building elements. For example, the lower floor columns of high-rise concrete buildings may use concrete of 80 MPa PSI or more, to keep the size of the columns small. Bridges may use long beams of high-strength concrete to lower the number of spans required. Occasionally, other structural needs may require high-strength concrete. If a structure must be very rigid, concrete of very high strength may be specified, even much stronger than is required to bear the service loads. Strengths as high as 130 MPa 18,900 PSI have been used commercially for these reasons. Topic. In construction. Concrete is one of the most durable building materials. It provides superior fire resistance compared with wooden construction and gains strength over time. Structures made of concrete can have a long service life. Concrete is used more than any other artificial material in the world. As of 2006, about 7.5 billion cubic meters of concrete are made each year, more than one cubic meter for every person on Earth. Topic. Mass structures 
due to cement's exothermic chemical reaction while setting up, large concrete structures such as dams, navigation locks, large mat foundations, and large breakwaters generate excessive heat during hydration and associated expansion. To mitigate these effects, post-cooling is commonly applied during construction. An early example at Hoover Dam used a network of pipes between vertical concrete placements to circulate cooling water during the curing process to avoid damaging overheating. Similar systems are still used, depending on volume of the pour, the concrete mix used, and ambient air temperature. The cooling process may last for many months after the concrete is placed. Various methods also are used to pre-cool the concrete mix in mass concrete structures. Another approach to mass concrete structures that minimizes cement's thermal byproduct is the use of roller compacted concrete, which uses a dry mix which has a much lower cooling requirement than conventional wet placement. It is deposited in thick layers as a semi-dry material then roller compacted into a dense, strong mass. Topic. Surface finishes Raw concrete surfaces tend to be porous and have a relatively uninteresting appearance. Many different finishes can be applied to improve the appearance and preserve the surface against staining, water penetration, and freezing. Examples of improved appearance include stamped concrete where the wet concrete has a pattern impressed on the surface, to give a paved, cobbled or brick-like effect, and may be accompanied with coloration. Another popular effect for flooring and table tops is polished concrete where the concrete is polished optically flat with diamond abrasives and sealed with polymers or other sealants. Other finishes can be achieved with chiseling, or more conventional techniques such as painting or covering it with other materials. The proper treatment of the surface of concrete, and therefore its characteristics, is an important stage in the construction and renovation of architectural structures. Topic. Pre-stressed structures Pre-stressed concrete is a form of reinforced concrete that builds in compressive stresses during construction to oppose tensile stresses experienced in use. This can greatly reduce the weight of beams or slabs, by better distributing the stresses in the structure to make optimal use of the reinforcement. For example, a horizontal beam tends to sag. Pre-stressed reinforcement along the bottom of the beam counteracts this. In pre-tensioned concrete, the pre-stressing is achieved by using steel or polymer tendons or bars that are subjected to a tensile force prior to casting, or for post-tensioned concrete, after casting. More than 55,000 miles kilometers of highways in the United States are paved with this material. Reinforced concrete, pre-stressed concrete and precast concrete are the most widely used types of concrete functional extensions in modern days. See Brutalism. Topic. Cold weather placement Extreme weather conditions extreme heat or cold, windy condition, and humidity variations can significantly alter the quality of concrete. Many precautions are observed in cold weather placement. Low temperatures significantly slow the chemical reactions involved in hydration of cement, thus affecting the strength development. Preventing freezing is the most important precaution, as formation of ice crystals can cause damage to the crystalline structure of the hydrated cement paste. If the surface of the concrete pour is insulated from the outside temperatures, the heat of hydration will prevent freezing. The American Concrete Institute ACI definition of cold weather placement, ACI 306, is a period when for more than three successive days the average daily air temperature drops below 40 F approximately 4.5 degrees Celsius, and temperature stays below 50 F 10 degrees Celsius for more than one half of any 24-hour period. In Canada, where temperatures tend to be much lower during the cold season, the following criteria are used by CSAA 23.1. When the air temperature is 5 degrees Celsius, and 
when there is a probability that the temperature may fall below 5 degrees Celsius within 24 hours of placing the concrete, the minimum strength before exposing concrete to extreme cold is 500 psi 3.5 megapascals. CSA at 23.1 specified a compressive strength of 7.0 megapascals to be considered safe for exposure to freezing. Topic. Roads Concrete roads are more fuel efficient to drive on, more reflective and last significantly longer than other paving surfaces, yet have a much smaller market share than other paving solutions. Modern paving methods and design practices have changed the economics of concrete paving, so that a well-designed and placed concrete pavement will be less expensive on initial costs and significantly less expensive over the life cycle. Another major benefit is that pervious concrete can be used, which eliminates the need to place storm drains near the road, and reducing the need for slightly sloped roadway to help rainwater to run off. No longer requiring discarding rainwater through use of drains also means that less electricity is needed, more pumping is otherwise needed in the water distribution system, and no rainwater gets polluted as it no longer mixes with polluted water. Rather, it is immediately absorbed by the ground. Topic. Energy efficiency Energy requirements for transportation of concrete are low because it is produced locally from local resources, typically manufactured within 100 km of the job site. Similarly, relatively little energy is used in producing and combining the raw materials although large amounts of CO2 are produced by the chemical reactions in cement manufacture. The overall embodied energy of concrete at roughly 1 to 1.5 MJ per kilogram is therefore lower than for most structural and construction materials. Once in place, concrete offers great energy efficiency over the lifetime of a building. Concrete walls leak air far less than those made of wood frames. Air leakage accounts for a large percentage of energy loss from a home. The thermal mass properties of concrete increase the efficiency of both residential and commercial buildings. By storing and releasing the energy needed for heating or cooling, concrete's thermal mass delivers year-round benefits by reducing temperature swings inside and minimizing heating and cooling costs. While insulation reduces energy loss through the building envelope, thermal mass uses walls to store and release energy. Modern concrete wall systems use both external insulation and thermal mass to create an energy-efficient building. Insulating concrete forms ICFs, are hollow blocks or panels made of either insulating foam or rastra that are stacked to form the shape of the walls of a building and then filled with reinforced concrete to create the structure. Topic. Fire safety. Concrete buildings are more resistant to fire than those constructed using steel frames, since concrete has lower heat conductivity than steel and can thus last longer under the same fire conditions. Concrete is sometimes used as a fire protection for steel frames, for the same effect as above. Concrete as a fire shield, for example fondue fire, can also be used in extreme environments like a missile launch pad. Options for non-combustible construction include floors, ceilings and roofs made of cast-in-place and hollow core precast concrete. For walls, concrete masonry technology and insulating concrete forms ICFs, are additional options. ICFs are hollow blocks or panels made of fireproof insulating foam that are stacked to form the shape of the walls of a building and then filled with reinforced concrete to create the structure. Concrete also provides good resistance against externally applied forces such as high winds, hurricanes, and tornadoes owing to its lateral stiffness, which results in minimal horizontal movement. However, this stiffness can work against certain types of concrete structures, particularly where a relatively higher flexing structure is required to resist more extreme forces. Topic. Earthquake safety As discussed above, concrete is very strong in compression, but weak in tension. 
Larger earthquakes can generate very large shear loads on structures. These shear loads subject the structure to both tensile and compressional loads. Concrete structures without reinforcement, like other unreinforced masonry structures, can fail during severe earthquake shaking. Unreinforced masonry structures constitute one of the largest earthquake risks globally. These risks can be reduced through seismic retrofitting of at-risk buildings, e.g. school buildings in Istanbul, Turkey. Topic. Degradation Concrete can be damaged by many processes, such as the expansion of corrosion products of the steel reinforcement bars, freezing of trapped water, fire or radiant heat, aggregate expansion, sea water effects, bacterial corrosion, leaching, erosion by fast-flowing water, physical damage and chemical damage from carbonatation, chlorides, sulfates and distillate water. The microfungi Aspergillus alternaria and Cladosporium were able to grow on samples of concrete used as a radioactive waste barrier in the Chernobyl reactor, leaching aluminum, iron, calcium, and silicon. Topic: Environmental and health. The manufacture and use of concrete produce a wide range of environmental and social consequences. Some are harmful, some welcome, and some both, depending on circumstances. A major component of concrete is cement, which similarly exerts environmental and social effects. The cement industry is one of the three primary producers of carbon dioxide, a major greenhouse gas, the other two being the energy production and transportation industries. Every ton of cement produced releases one ton of CO2 into the atmosphere. As of 2019, the production of Portland cement contributed 8% to global anthropogenic CO2 emissions, largely due to the sintering of limestone and clay at 1,500 degrees Celsius 2,730 degrees Fahrenheit. Researchers have suggested a number of approaches to improving carbon sequestration relevant to concrete production. Concrete is used to create hard surfaces that contribute to surface runoff, which can cause heavy soil erosion, water pollution, and flooding, but conversely can be used to divert, dam, and control flooding. Concrete dust released by building demolition and natural disasters can be a major source of dangerous air pollution. Concrete is a contributor to the urban heat island effect, though less so than asphalt. Workers who cut, grind or polish concrete are at risk of inhaling airborne silica, which can lead to silicosis. This includes crew members who work in concrete chipping. The presence of some substances in concrete, including useful and unwanted additives, can cause health concerns due to toxicity and radioactivity. Fresh concrete before curing is complete is highly alkaline and must be handled with proper protective equipment. Topic: Recycling. Concrete recycling is an increasingly common method for disposing of concrete structures. Concrete debris was once routinely shipped to landfills for disposal, but recycling is increasing due to improved environmental awareness, governmental laws and economic benefits. Topic World records the world record for the largest concrete pour in a single project as the Three Gorges Dam in Hubei Province, China by the Three Gorges Corporation. The amount of concrete used in the construction of the dam is estimated at 16 million cubic meters over 17 years. The previous record was 12.3 million cubic meters held by Itaipu Hydropower Station in Brazil. The world record for concrete pumping was set on the 7th of August 2009 during the construction of the Parbati Hydroelectric Project near the village of Suwand, Himachal Pradesh, India, when the concrete mix was pumped through a vertical height of 715 meters (2346 feet). The world record for the largest continuously poured concrete raft was achieved in August 2007 in Abu Dhabi by contracting firm Al Habtor CCC joint venture and the concrete supplier as Unibitan Ready Mix. The pour, a part of the foundation for the Abu Dhabi's landmark tower, was 16,000 cubic meters of concrete poured within a two-day period. 
The previous record, 13,200 cubic meters poured in 54 hours despite a severe tropical storm requiring the site to be covered with tarpaulins to allow work to continue, was achieved in 1992 by joint Japanese and South Korean consortiums Hazama Corporation and the Samsung CNT Corporation for the construction of the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The world record for largest continuously poured concrete floor was completed 8 November 1997 in Louisville, Kentucky by design-build firm EXXCEL Project Management. The monolithic placement consisted of 225,000 square feet 20,900 square meters of concrete placed in 30 hours, finished to a flatness tolerance of FF54.60 and a levelness tolerance of FL43.83. This surpassed the previous record by 50% in total volume and 7.5% in total area. The record for the largest continuously placed underwater concrete pour was completed the 18th of October 2010 in New Orleans, Louisiana by contractor CJ Mayan Construction Company, LLC of Grove City, Ohio. The placement consisted of 10,251 cubic yards of concrete placed in 58.5 hours using two concrete pumps and two dedicated concrete batch plants. Upon curing, this placement allows the 50,180 square foot 4,662 square meters cofferdam to be dewatered approximately 26 feet 7.9 meters below sea level to allow the construction of the Inner Harbor Navigation Canal Sill and Monolith Project to be completed in the dry. <laughs> See also